Okay, so today I am doing the mid-year book freakout tag. As I said in my last video, it is June. We are pretty much halfway through the year, so the rest of June is going to be comprised of a lot of mid-year videos. I hope you enjoy them. Today's video is the mid-year book freakout tag. I will have the two co-creators of this tag linked in the description of this video, as well as all the questions, if you wanna follow along and answer them as well. Question number one, the best book I've read so far in 2021. I really wanna just say my gut instinct is gonna be A Man Called Ove and um, The Ember Blade. Well, let me look through my spreadsheet. If you don't know, my friend Lynn created a spreadsheet and keeps up with this spreadsheet for all the books that I've read this year because she knows that I'm incompetent and wouldn't keep up with my reading if she didn't do it for me, and I love her. Okay, if you'll forgive me, I'm gonna give you uh, several, and I don't actually have most of them here with me, so I'm just gonna put them on the screen. But I'm going to list, I'll just, how many, how many am I allowed to list? It says best book, so I'm supposed to pick one. <sighs> Can I pick more? Can I pick five? Can I give you my top five? I'm gonna do it whether you say yes or no. So top five in no particular order, we have The Ember Blade, which I've talked about a lot and I have a whole dedicated review for because it's excellent and I really, really, really recommend it. It's this, uh, it's this modern, Lord of the Rings inspired story that is very reminiscent of Lord of the Rings, but still completely its own. It follows these two best friends, Cade and Aaron, who uh, live in this landscape, in this world that is so beautifully described and feels so familiar, yet is its own thing. Uh, these characters get into a conundrum and then have to escape from said conundrum, and then they go on this adventure to get this sword. Um, and they, along the way, acquire a group of people that attempt to help them on their mission. And it, this whole story just feels so familiar. It feels like a classic fantasy tale while still being its own unique thing. I absolutely adored these characters. I loved the quest that we went on, even though quest stories aren't generally my thing. I do love this type of, of classical fantasy fellowship <laughs> sort of thing. The, uh, the, the obstacles that they had to face, the way they got out of it, the way the group of people changed along the way, it's just such an excellent tale. Next I'm gonna say A Man Called Ove, which is a really different story. This is literary fiction and this is about an old grumpy man who uh, is just trying to get people to leave him alone. And uh, through this course of time that we spend with him, we get to know him really, really well, the things that really bother him. And then we go a little bit and then a lot of it deeper into what makes him the way he is, why he's gotten to be so grumpy and really the core of his heart and we see a lot of growth and change in him as well. Ove is probably my number one favorite character of all time at this point. Um, I feel like he was a real part of my life and I, to this day, still mourn not spending time with him anymore. I want him to still be a part of my life. I'm probably gonna reread this book before the end of this year because it, I feel like I should still be interacting with him daily. He, it feels like he was my neighbor for a while. And I miss him and this grumpy, crotchety old man who I, I know on such a deep level now. And his story was so beautiful and I miss him. Kindred, which is a classic sci-fi historical fiction. Um, it's about this black woman in 1976 who suddenly time travels and now she's in 1815, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and she keeps getting pulled back to the past every time this little boy go, gets in danger. And as he grows up, she's continually pulled back to him. But this is very scary for her because one, she's in 1815 and, and around that age where, uh, 
life is just scary there. You know, she's afraid of potentially eating bad foods. She's afraid of getting bit by mosquitoes. She's afraid of getting hurt and having to deal with the doctors of that time. But then also, she's a black woman in this time with no free papers, with, um, you know, a, a lot of obstacles surrounding that. And this was, in my opinion, such a high tension story, but also the things that the author was discussing me with me throughout this story were absolutely fantastic and I loved this book so much. I think that even though it is a sci-fi, it's very light on sci-fi. The time travel is very wibbly wobbly and not, you know, hard sci-fi. Uh, I would say that it also should fall under literary fiction because there's a lot being, a lot happening between the pages here as well. Naturally, I have to also mention One Piece because One Piece has kind of taken over my life just a little bit. Listen, when I started this series, I had one very persistent commenter that really wanted me to start it, so I just started it just you know, to do the thing. And I, at the time that I started it, I did not know that this was a popular series. I did not know how long it was at all. And I did not expect it to take over so much of me. <laughs> But this series is so good. The the friendships in this crew absolutely kill me. I can't, like, it's really hard. Listen, I fly through these chapters. I'm constantly drawn back into that story. I can't get away from, from One Piece for very long before I'm just, like, itching to know what's going to happen next. Or even if it's in a slow part of the story, just itching to spend more time with these characters because the group dynamics between them is un touchable. I'm such a character focused reader and listen, these characters have won my heart so much. But also I'm in such a pirate and nautical mood and I'm on this epic, silly, lighthearted, fun, emotionally intense pirate adventure with characters that I can't get enough of. I can't lose. Also, the world that I'm reading in is blowing my mind. The How unique each and every individual thing is and how they tie together is so good. I don't know. I really like it. On that same thread, I would say the last book that I want to put in this category is going to be uh, Frenchman's Creek, which is another pirate story. This is a adventure romance, which again, not really my thing, I wouldn't think, but Daphne du Maurier just wins me over on this sort of stuff. She, so this is, this follows a, an English woman who uh, goes away to one of her manor homes with her kids and, uh, and, and there's pirates there and she is very intrigued by them. She's very disappointed with her current life situation and she gets swept away in this pirate adventure. And I felt like I was with her. I felt like I was learning the ropes with her and I felt like I was going on this adventure with her. And it was, ugh, Du Maurier is such an immersive writer and I feel like I'm there. I can feel the ocean breeze sweeping up and hitting me. I can feel, I can feel the breeze in my hair and I can, I'm, I'm pulling at the sails and failing miserably and, the, the 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 adventure and the the tension when things aren't going just right it's just I don't know I don't know what to tell you I loved this book all right I've probably spent enough time on this question question number two best sequel you've read so far in 2020 let me look through my spreadsheet but it's gonna be one piece yeah it's gonna be one piece so one piece um was a series that started off good. I liked it. I enjoyed it. And I would happily read a good chunk of it and then go read a bunch of books and then come back and read a good chunk of it and go read a bunch of books. And I can't do that anymore. I have to be consistently reading One Piece chapters along with my standard novels. And uh, I don't know. It's infiltrated my life. It's, it's so much more than I expected it to be and I love it. Question number three, new release you haven't read yet, but want to. I think I'm going to say, uh, let me pull it up. It hasn't come in the mail yet. I actually don't know. It's probably gonna be released anytime now. The Jasmine Throne, that's a book. Uh, okay, it releases 
on June 8th. So by the time you see this, it'll have been released. So this totally counts. So the Jasmine Throne, um, uh, let me look at the description real quick to make sure I'm gonna get it right. I'm actually just gonna read to you the final couple of lines, a uh, couple of sentences in this description. Uh, it talks about when Milani witnesses Priya's true nature, their destinies become irrevocably tangled. One is a ruthless princess seeking to steal a throne. The other is a powerful priestess seeking to save her family. Together, they will set an empire ablaze. I don't really know a lot of what this story is gonna be, but I have pre-ordered this book because I don't, you know, something very, uh, something that I don't talk about a lot on this channel is that I'm really into a really well done princess fantasy. There's a lot of cheesy ones out there, but I think it can be done so, so well. Someone like a princess trying to save her kingdom appeals to me so much. And if it's done well, I love it. And this one looks like it could potentially be really, really cool. So I'm really excited to read this one. It comes out uh, in June, so I'll probably start reading it at the end of June. And I think I'm gonna love it. I hope I'm gonna love it. Uh, book four, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Whatever Bachman's putting out in the second half of the year. Let me find out. Frederick Bachman. 2021 release. What? It's gonna be Bear Town book three this year? Oh, I don't know that I'm emotionally ready for that. Ooh, okay. I knew he was putting out a book later this year. I'm not sure that I can, I can do this. I can and I will. Yup, that is definitely my most highly anticipated release for the second half of this year. Oh, oh, that's gonna be heartbreaking. Uh, question number five, biggest disappointment. It's gonna be Kafka on the shore, isn't it? Murakami is an author that people absolutely adore and I don't like, I don't like being down on things that people love. So I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna go off on this, but it really didn't work for me. Um, I think that Murakami, I've read two of his books now, and I think that he's just not the author for me. His pacing doesn't work for me. His depiction of women super doesn't work for me. Uh, his his choices to go very gratuitous into his descriptions of things doesn't work for me. Um, I like his concepts. I like what he sets out to do. And a lot of times I think that he does certain aspects of it really well, but then other aspects of it, I don't. Uh, so I'm probably done with this author and Kafka on the Shore especially just was not for me, which is considered one of his masterpieces. So I don't know, I'm very sorry. <laughs> but if you want to see more detailed explanation of why I didn't care for this book, I do have a review and there's a lot of screenshots uh, to kind of discuss it a little bit further but a lot of people do consider him a masterpiece. So, you know, listen to other people about the book too. Oh, actually on this list too, I'm gonna put Jade War, which I definitely liked Jade War a lot more than I liked Kafka on the Shore. Um, but if we're talking about disappointments and not just like something that I didn't like, because I did overall like Jade War, but, this book was hyped so hard. This book was hyped so daggum hard. And the general consensus that I heard was if you liked Jade City, you will absolutely be blown away by Jade War. It'll be a new favorite. You're gonna lose your mind. And honestly, I thought it was fine. I didn't think it was great. Uh, oof, that's gonna be a controversial one. But you know what? It's what I thought. I still don't have a review out for it yet because I buddy read this with QNTG and with Michael Nip and QNTG and I are done. Michael Nip is being a slow poke about it. We love him, it's okay. He can read at whatever pace he wants. But whenever he's done, the four of us are gonna do a buddy review of it. So that'll come eventually. Book number six, biggest surprise. That has to be the Ember Blade, right? Cause I went into that with zero expectations. A subscriber sent it to me and said, if you like Lord of the Rings and the Lies of Lock Lamora, you'll like this, which is just like not a fair way to hype a book because those are two of my all time favorite series. So naturally it will disappoint me with that kind of a hype. And it 
didn't disappoint me. I didn't love it as much as either of those, but honestly, if I could get my hands on book two today, I would drop everything and be reading it today. And I could easily see this being one of my top five favorite series, depending on how the series goes. I adored it and I'm shocked at how much I did. Oh, One Piece. One Piece was an absolute out of left field, never would have expected to love it on this level. Surprise. Question number seven, favorite new author. Ooh, oh, that's a great question. Um, favorite new author is an excellent question. So my standard for favorite authors is always that I have to be able, I have to have read more than one piece of that, of their work, which means more than one series by them in order for them to be a favorite author. That's why Scott, Scott Lynch isn't on my favorite author list, even though he writes my favorite series, because I've never read but that one series by him. So favorite new author has to be somebody that I've read multiple books by and loved multiple books. So I don't know if I have an author that could fit that, but let me look. Yeah, I don't have an author that fits that, but I can tell you some that I'm on the lookout for. The author of A Silent Voice, which is another series that really surprised me at how much I ended up loving it. Uh, I really want to read his other series, and I could definitely see myself following his work very closely anytime he puts something out, just based off of how much I enjoyed A Silent Voice. I could definitely see myself potentially uh, considering N.K. Jemisin one of my favorite authors, which isn't really new to this year because I read the Broken Earth trilogy, I think, two years ago. Uh, but I am reading the Inheritance trilogy this year. So depending on how well that goes, or at least I'm reading the first book in the Inheritance trilogy this month. So depending on how, how that goes, I just really could see her being an author that I fall for. Uh, the author of Still Alice, she writes a lot of literary fiction, and I have more of her books on my TBR. I could definitely see her being an author that I follow very, very closely. And yeah, I think that's probably my biggest contenders of what I've read so far this year. Oh, and of course, Christopher Wooding. Definitely, I'm going to be reading more of his work. I could definitely see him being an author. If all of his books, if I can love on a similar level to The Ember Blade, 100%, he'll be on the list. Uh, number eight, newest fictional crush. I, n n no one. Question number nine, favorite, newest favorite character. I'm gonna skip this, I'm so sorry, but I have a video coming next week where I'm talking about my favorite fictional characters of 2021 so far. So um, I'm just gonna let that be its own video. So sorry for skipping two questions at once, but uh, yeah, no, that's about all. That's all I have to say about that. Question number 10, book that made you cry. Hello, Ove. We're discussing you again. I just need to buy that book. I got it from the library and I talk about it so much on the channel. I just need to buy it so that I can hold it up for you and have it with my Bachman books. But anyway, Ove made me sob so hard. It's ridiculous. I told this story during my review, but I was reading, I was casually reading the book and Corey popped into my office to grab something and I'm just reading a book. And then he left and then I hit a line that made me burst into such aggressive tears that then Corey walked back into my office like 10 seconds later and stopped in his tracks and he was like, are you okay? What happened? And because it was so intense, <laughs> that book was the most heartwarming thing <sighs> I loved that book. I loved it so much and it made me cry multiple times. I know there are other books that have made me cry. Let me look. I don't cry a lot in books. One Piece has made me cry. I'm sorry for bringing it up so often. Man, I'm pretty sure a Silent Voice made me cry. Still Alice made me cry. <sighs> that might be all. Yeah, that might be it. Question number 11, a book that made you happy? Well, a lot of books made me happy. Basically everything I've read about pirates or just being at sea always makes me happy. House in the Cerulean Sea is such a feel-good book and it had a lot of moments that just like warmed my heart. The posthumous memoirs of Bras Cubas made me crack up and I loved that. The Ember Plate obviously made me happy and One Piece. Question number 12, most beautiful book you've bought so far this year? Ooh. Oh, I love that question. I think it's gonna be The Bone Shard Daughter, which is going to be the Patreon, one of the Patreon Buddy Reads in July. So I'm gonna be reading it really soon. And it's gorgeous. I'll just have Corey take a picture of it. It's so beautiful. And I just like to look at it. 
It also has a beautiful spine. My golly. Oh, actually, I really loved the cover of Lore, but I DNF'd that book. Oops. Uh, question number 13. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? What kind of question? Um, <laughs> I could show you my TBR stack. Would you like to see it? I'll have Corey take a picture of it and put it here. Those are all the books that I'm the most excited to read really soon. I will continue to add to that stack throughout the year. So I, I want to read more pirate books. I want to read a lot of things. I want to read a lot of things. I mean, the stack will never stop growing. There will, there, will, there will always be an infinite number of books that I'm very excited to read, and I'll never get to read them all, but that's okay, because I am loving the ones that I'm reading. I hope you enjoyed this tag. I hope you enjoyed this mid-year freakout tag. I feel very calm. I don't feel freaked out at all. I hope you guys are answering these questions along with me. Like I said, the, the questions are in the description of this video, so I'd love it if you copied it and pasted it and gave me your answers. Also, let me know what new release you're the most excited to read, or if you don't have a new release, or if you don't want to. What's the one book that you're most excited to read before the end of the year? I would love to hear. Be sure to chat with me more about all this in the comments. Check out my Patreon if you feel like it. I post videos every Tuesday through Friday. I'll see you again soon. Bye.